the body's natural uh, assignment is just to try to heal you through this thing. But again, Flonase can lead to these kind of issues and you continuously take them because you're told to. In today's video, I'm going to break down five things that can be going wrong if you're taking Flonase to try to treat eustachian tube dysfunction and tinnitus related symptoms. And I am just going to let you know that a lot of these nasal sprays, the medicated ones that are prescribed to you, have these same problems. But in today's video, I'm going to break down Flonase specifically because this is the nasal spray that I was ultimately taking for this condition. And I'm going to tell you, it didn't help me one bit. So before we get into the five things that can be going wrong with taking Flonase, I want to let everyone know that I am not a doctor. I am not someone authorized to prescribe or recommend medication. I'm just going to give you the information and ultimately you're going to make the decision on your own. Number one, over drying. Flonase can dry out the nasal passages, exacerbating ETD by reducing mucus production and worsening nasal congestion. Flonase can dry out those passages. While this might seem beneficial for reducing nasal congestion, it can actually worsen ETD symptoms. The nasal mucosa plays a crucial role in regulating air pressure and humidity in the nasal cavity. When the nasal passages are overdried, the mucosa can become inflamed and irritated, leading to increased congestion and pressure in the eustachian tube. This can cause discomfort, popping, or clicking sounds in the ears, and even affect hearing. I was taking Flonase like it recommended on the box and like my doctor told me to, and little did I know that I was probably reversing a lot of the problems. And I was very faithful to medication when it comes to trying to get rid of something. I'm one of those people that follows everything to the T, never misses a beat, always takes my medication on time, especially if it, when you have ETD. I was very desperate in year two, even in year one, a little bit more in year three. But I was taking it faithfully and I realized I was probably doing more harm than good because I was getting that very burst of relief and then it was actually making it worse in the long run. So let's move on to number two. And number two, increased pressure. Yes, this is probably a haymaker to the gut knowing this. Flucotasone and Flonase can increase pressure in the eustachian tube, making it harder for it to open and close properly. This can cause intense ETD symptoms such as ear fullness, hearing loss, or autophony, hearing one's own breathing sounds. The increased pressure can also cause the eustachian tube to become blocked or obstructed, leading to a buildup of fluid or air in the middle ear. This can lead to further complications such as ear infections or eustachian tube dysfunction. So this is not to say for all of you out there that are dealing with these symptoms, the blocked ears, the pressure, that you're taking Flonase. But there's something to keep in mind for those of you that are using Flonase to get rid of eustachian tube dysfunction. Although there are signs to say that it may help get rid of it, but it also doesn't tell you that you may also have increased symptoms, even symptoms that you didn't have. And this is what's calling the, causing the major spiral effect for a lot of you that are taking this. And you're not being told that this could happen, could make it worse. So let's move on to number three. And number three, nasal cycle disruption. Flonase can disrupt a natural nasal cycle, leading to prolonged periods of nasal congestion. The nasal cycle is the natural process by which the nasal passages alternate between congestion and decongestion. This cycle is regulated by the body's natural hormonal changes and is essential for maintaining healthy nasal function. When Flonase is used, it can suppress the nasal cycle, leading to prolonged periods of congestion. This can worsen ETD symptoms as the eustachian tube relies on the nasal cycle to regulate air pressure and humidity. So if you ever notice that there's a uh, immediate change in the way you feel in your nasal passages, you kind of feel this sensation where it's a little clogged one morning, then you get that little burst of relief where you feel the draining happening. It's the cycle of which it's the body trying to progress you through this process of ETD. And when you put that Flonase in there, you disrupt the natural body's chemistry and enable to get that congestion to come down or just the lining of the nasal passages in general. So the natural process of it is trying to heal. The body's natural uh, assignment is just to try to heal you through this thing. But again, 
Flonase can lead to these kind of issues and you continuously take them because you're told to. So let's move on to number four. Number four, dependence and rebound. Overuse or prolonged use of Flonase can lead to dependence and rebound congestion. Now, this simply means that the nasal passages become accustomed to the medication and rely on it to stay congested or decongested in this sense. When the medication wears off, the nasal passages become congested again, leading to a vicious cycle of dependency. This can worsen ETD symptoms as the eustachian tube becomes more susceptible to blockage or obstruction. Rebound congestion can also lead to increased pressure and discomfort in the ears. This has actually happened to me. It got to the point where I was carrying my nasal uh, spray in like a little uh, carry-on bag, a little pouch, because I just was like, I can't not move on if I don't have this, this nasal spray. I can't do anything. I didn't even want to leave it at home. And even though there's hours, there's an hour variation from the time you take it, I still needed it with me because I didn't want to miss 10 minutes without having it. Again, another symptom or a side effect, I should say, of the rebound effect, which I brought in, brought up in many of my videos. This not only affects you, uh, you know, physically, but it affects you mentally as well. You feel like you can't do anything till you get another sh uh, shot of that flow days. And this is not going to help heal ETDs, not going to help with the mental stress of ETDs. It's really just going to add more problems that you don't need to try to, you know, what you're trying to ultimately get through this thing. So again, this is not something that's on the label and telling you that, hey, this may happen, this may not happen, but there's no warning signs. So you continuously take it as you're prescribed to and even taking it correctly and responsibly, the rebound effect ultimately occurs. So number five, let's move on. And number five, underlying condition masking. Flonase might mask underlying ETD symptoms, potentially delaying proper diagnosis and treatment of the condition. While Flonase can provide temporary relief from nasal congestion, it may not address the underlying causes of ETD. By masking the symptoms, Flonase can lead to a delay in seeking medical attention, allowing the condition to worsen over time. It's essential to consult a doctor or ENT specialist to determine the underlying cause of ETD symptoms and develop an appropriate treatment plan. So like with any medication, when you take it, you're kind of masking it. You know, Not all the time are you going to heal it that way. With ETD, it's so broad and what it could be causing it. It could be a lot of reasons. Um, just the way the structure is of the jaw, the posture, um, certain things that you know, you're know you doing, maybe lack of sleep, your positioning of how you sleep. There's just so many things that could be causing ETD. Well, when you continuously use Flonase or other related nasal uh, sprays, you're masking what could be causing it. In this sense, let's just pick on poor posture. Poor posture is a huge issue in our world. Poor posture is the main problem, and the structure of the jaw and the way you hold your neck is the problem. That flowness is not going to help treat that issue. So it's definitely something you have to do a little more digging in and try to rid your body of some of these chemicals if you don't actually know what's causing it. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this video was very helpful for you. If it was, please take time to subscribe to the channel. I try to bring content as often as possible. But in the meantime, I'm going to step out of the J-Wing studio and leave you in good hands with this video. Like anything else, folks, we're here to simply go back to the basics. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.